Hey everyone, welcome back to I Just Watched. I'm Joseph, and we're discussing The Rings of Power, Episode 3. We know it's Lord of the Rings, so I'm just going to start. I'm just going to cut to the rings. Before we jump into it, I got to hit you with the usual, which is hopefully you like this enough to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the little bell to get notified. Official spoiler warning before we get into Episode 3. And I'm going to start with, who is Adar? I'm assuming that's going to become someone relevant to future situations to the third age, to the uh, first official rise of Sauron and defeat of Sauron, and then of course the, again, re-rise and defeat, an official defeat of Sauron being Lord of the Rings Hobbit. Anyways, I'm assuming he becomes someone vital. Maybe the witch, <gasps> could be the witch king, dude. I didn't think about that until right now. Thank you, y'all see y'all smart. I don't even know. What kind of orcs are these that they can do to sunlight? Is it because they're all albino and the sun, it clearly burns them or because one of them goes, stay in the sun all day, you'll become black. So you're telling me like the black orcs get created because they can deal with the sun? And these whack-ass white orcs are like, ah, I need my sunblock. Which don't get me wrong, everyone should wear a little bit of sunblock. But I'm just Numenor, because we know where that can go, and rephrase, where that does go. As of right now, because I'm just going to pronounce it the way I think it's pronounced, or I'm just going to say it, and then if it's wrong... Hopefully you still understand who I'm talking about. Farazon, I don't, he cannot yet be corrupted by Sauron. He's still clearly a decent to good person, character. Because the one ring to rule them all isn't even made yet. Kellen Rimor hasn't even started, as far as we know, on the rings. So he can't be corrupted yet, but we know that is a f big problem later for Numenor. He's the reason Numenor falls. Sauron deceives him. <laughs> Sauron the deceiver. Uses the ring. It's going to be the boo boo I'm in charge. Elendil, the tall... So, I had a, because I remember him, you know, being called a tall or something statuesque. So, I googled to remember his height. My boy is supposed to be 7 foot 11. The show clearly said, nah, nah, no sir, no, <laughs> nah, papa, mm -mm. I wish it would maybe at least reference it jokingly, you know, him being tall or little movie show magic, make him appear slightly taller, being that he's supposed to be 7 foot 11, okay? Him and Shaq. I don't even know how tall Shaq is, but I'm assuming he's taller than Shaq. Shaq, I don't think Shaq is no eight foot fucking tall, okay? Elendil, huge, important character because he is the real, I keep saying Papa, father of the two founders of Gondor. Isildur, which we've met, and his brother Aaron, which we have not met yet, but they reference. And they're the founders of Gondor. I mean, dude, uh, an Aaron is like the direct, I don't know how many greats Grandpapa of Aragorn the second. I think maybe that's why they haven't Quite shown us him yet. I think it's on purpose. They're gonna do a reveal. It's not I don't think it's gonna be like oh shit But I do think his character design is gonna be that similar to Aragorn's just to be like thousands of years later He looks similar to the the to the, the oof, to his great great. I can't remember how many greats Grandfather Sildor is one of the him and his brother and stuff of course like I said founders of Gondor, but they defeat Sauron, they cut off, and they, but they fail to destroy the ring, but you know. Curious to why the sister was created, because she doesn't exist in any of the writings. I understand that the show has clearly made a lot of characters to push their story. She just doesn't make sense to me. I guess they're going for like the family dynamic, but I figured you could have done that with the two brothers. I feel like the show is definitely getting better. I'm starting to like it more. I say that because the slow motion cut to her riding the bloody horse felt like so such a waste of time. Was it pretty? Yes. Did it serve any purpose? God, no. I was just sitting there like, okay, it's kind of interesting. You're dropping characters. Like, we're getting some. Why am I watching this fucking horse's hooves? Like, I get it. It, it run fast, boy. And then boom, we're there. And I was like, what? What? Who's, who thought that was a good cut? Who, who thought that? I would have preferred a wide and just see them run. Anyways, it just felt like such a waste. Hellbrand. I feel is going to become a Aragorn in a sense of this series. Of course, an Aragorn, Isildur are going to be the Aragorn, but I think Hellbrand is like that subtle, I'm going to be secretly a king, which they kind of tell us he is the, a king, or at least, you know, blood of a king runs through him type thing. And that being said, I think he's going to be the king of the dead, the cursed king. I could partially see why he might be. I don't know why I said it like that. 
is sound on the deceiver, but the ring's not made yet, so there's no point for him to being there, so I'm throwing that one out the window, personally. Also, him being the, the Witch King, I can kind of see, but with like the dead drop in our face of him being royalty with the Sidra and whatnot, makes me think he really is the king of the, the cursed king. It just makes more sense pushing the st uh, story forward. Plus, we're getting to the point where we know this ends at that final battle where they defeat Sauron for the first time. Moving on. That ward is wonky as fuck. Clearly dropped as a, as a pup. I say that because we, I can say that confidently, have seen elves do absolutely amazing things, especially in battle. These elves are stupid. One ward, and it took out like all of them. And then they failed horribly. I've seen one elf whoop ass against multiple wargs. Whoop ass against multiple orcs. And Urukai and trolls. Why is this wonky ass, bug eyed, clearly not mentally all there warg causing a real problem here? I feel like that just didn't make sense. It would have made more sense if it was multiple wargs, like two or three, even if they were wonky. And then them being tied up using the chains would have made more sense, to me at least, for that situation. However, moving forward, I think this series is getting more interesting. Again, we're three episodes deep. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. There's things I see them developing that I'm enjoying, that I'm starting to like. Of course, there's things that I'm nitpicking. There's things I dislike. I think there's bad decisions made here and there. So far, it's okay. I think it, it can get better. I think it has potential. And it really, what it made is a huge craving where instead of them giving me the reimagined fictional version of how the rings come to, pay, come to be, I would have much rather preferred a five season or whatever series that's all about Morgoth. That, to me, would have been amazing to see him turn to the dark side and then just see the corruption spread and have the whole dealing with him and dealing with that war and all that. That would have been a, what a series. And, of course, at the end, you see him, see him get defeated. Sauron resides. You think they've won, but you set little trickles telling us that clearly he's not because we know he comes back. Boom. I would have preferred to see that versus this because this... This whole series, no matter what they do, is 100% set up to The Hobbit and then more so The Lord of the Rings. No matter what they do, it's 100% set up for that. I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think of the show so far? Three episodes deep. Comments, questions, concerns, requests. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Was there something in the episode that stood out to you that I didn't reference? I love hearing from you down below. Let me know. But until next time, stay safe. Be well. Adios.